So uh, the agenda today is uh, what the, what is the concept of asynchronous task and what we will do with the help of uh, the concepts which we have learned so far just now that is the web interaction and combination of async task. Uh, now the particular part of code which I have just showed you Android has uh, released a rule in 4.0 and onwards that whatever web interaction code you write you cannot write directly in the activity. You have to write it, you need to write it in asynchronous task class to actually enhance the performance of the application. Because if you like write it, because web interactions are like a long running task. You hit to the server, you never know when the response is going to come. It may take one minute, it may take one second, it may take an hour. So uh, if I will implement it directly on the activity, it will directly affect my user UI. That is, it will stuck. The UI will stuck. UI will stuck, and that will create the problem for actually to uh, to process the application further. So that is why the Android has brought this rule that you, for whatever networking activity you are doing, you can do it within the asynchronous task. And what is this asynchronous task? What happens with this is like in the asynchronous task, it actually can directly update your UI. Uh, now why do we need asynchronous task? What is the job of asynchronous task? Now remember one thing. Uh, suppose I am doing something which is going to take some long time but I do not want my UI to be affected because of that. Now I take a lifetime example, let's say I am downloading 50 images from the server and I want to show them on the activity. Now one thing is that do not open the activity or keep showing the dialog process until unless all 50 is not downloaded. So that is where like user will be stuck after starting your application and will see keep seeing that process dialog until and unless all 50 of them has not been downloaded. Second thing is that, no, uh, what I can do is apply a thread mechanism where even after every image, once every single image has got downloaded, it starts showing it on the screen, on the activity and do not block the user so that it happens to be like until unless 50 is not downloaded, he won't able to see anything on the screen. One by one as the images keeps downloading and should keep coming on the screen. Now this is the good part and this is the optimized part because as many images as are downloaded you can show them on the screen. Uh, this is possible in Android with the help of asynchronous task which works directly which can update the user interface on the thread in Android. Otherwise if you use a normal thread without using the looper and handler you won't be able to update the thread from there itself. So you need to use kind of asynchronous type of example to actually uh, work in this fashion of uh, keeping things running on one side and once every bit of result is coming you keep updating your uh, window on it. Is it like Ajax? Uh, not exactly like Ajax but somewhat like a parallel thread which can directly update your UI with the things which are getting completing on the way to it. So if you see the live example it will be more clear to you. So async task class, class and ex encapsulates the creation of threads and handlers. Async task is started via the execute method. The execute method calls do in background and on post execute method. Now uh, all of you need to remember uh, once we have explained about the activity lifecycle where we have talked about the method of the activities like on resume, on post and on restart, on start, on create. Now all these methods have will be executed at a particular specific state of an activity. So if I say the activity is in the background quickly the answer will come it's in the on stop state. Correct? That's what here also the fund applies here in async task. When async task it starts, before starting we call it on pre-execute. That means it is about to start, it is not started. So whatever logic we want to happen before the execution of async task, we write in on pre-execute. 
then it comes to do in background do in background is a method which is responsible while the actual execution is happening when the particular request is hitting the server getting the response now once the response is landed the control goes to on post execute method and then in on post execute method it actually takes all the results because the results are available to you you just try to render those results in a manner you want to showcase them on the screen so these are couple of methods with their states on pre execute happens when the execution task is not at all started on execute uh, it's actually try to start the program do in background actually responsible to execute while the hitting to the server and getting the response is uh, happening and then finally on post execute method executes uh, like once the result has been arrived on the client side